Hi everyone. This past week, everybody's been talking about the same topic, the Aguna crisis. But many people are very bothered inside, and they are saying to themselves, how is it possible that our religion, that is supposed to be, that a Chayat al a pleasant Torah, a caring Torah, a Torah that teaches us how you have to care for everybody and alleviate their pain, how could the Torah allow a situation that a husband causes so much pain to his wife by not giving her a get? Where is the compassion? Where is the mercy? How could I be proud of my religion when our religion enables evil people to do such terrible things? So let's address this a little bit. Firstly, throughout history, there was a concept of kofinoto achomerotani, which means to say that if a man was supposed to give his wife a get and he didn't, the bedin would hire police and the police would literally hit the person till the person would say, I want to give a get. There was a solution throughout history for evil men. Not only that, the Rambam says, how are you allowed to do that? I thought the person has to give a divorce by free will. He says, that is free will. Why? Because deep down, everybody wants to do what's right. But the Yetzirah tells him, don't do what's right. So when you hit him, you're hitting the Yetzirah out of his system, and his goodwill of wanting to do the right thing comes forth. So A, there were solutions. And even till today, in Israel, the rabbinate does have the power to arrest someone who doesn't give a get, and they, it's done till today, 2021. It's not something of the past. It's done till today that they force people in certain cases to give a divorce. But even in a country like America, where we don't have those options, so rabbis recently have come up with other ideas. One idea is the prenuptial agreement, where a man promises his wife on the day of his wedding that no matter what, he will continue to support her financially, even if they are separated. And if they are separated, he forgives her whatever obligation a wife has to her husband, and he will still be obligated to support her financially. That is a tremendous incentive for a man to give his wife a get, because otherwise he's just paying and paying and paying, and it's legally binding. So nobody wants to be in that situation. That puts tremendous pressure, and that's not even considered by force, as he's just doing what he has to do by supporting her financially, because he hasn't given her, given her a get. So there are solutions. And over the years, the rabbis keep coming up with other solutions. And all different. And as we speak, there are rabbis trying to come up with other solutions. But I want to go a, a step further. This notion that the Torah doesn't care about women, God forbid, is, is, couldn't be the furthest from the truth. Let me give you an example. Do you know there's an halakha that says that if a boy and a girl are orphans and they come to the chesed fund and they ask for help, who gets help first, the boy or the girl? Halakha! Shohan Aruch, based on the Gemara, clearly states that the girl comes first because it's more difficult for her, it's more shameful for her. If the two of them come to ask for help to get married, the Halakha clearly states, based on the Gemara, that you must help the girl first. So you see, when it comes to emotional help, financial help, the Torah put the woman before the man. So this idea that the man comes before the woman and allows the man to do bad things, is opposite from what everything the Torah was trying to accomplish. And let me go a step further. Take the ketubah. What does every single man promise his wife on the day of his wedding? He promises her, I will work very hard to support you, to honor you, to take care of you with clothing, with, emotion, with emotional support, financial support. I will lift you, I will raise you and put you on a pedestal. All these beautiful words. It's not just words. He also makes a solemn oath, nishba shivua hamura kiat kaf, that he's going to fulfill all these obligations. So you see, the whole Torah from beginning to end is all about how the man must take care of the woman and be nice to her and take care of her and put her one step ahead of him. The Rambam says, honor her even more than himself. And on and on and on, we can keep going with this. But let me go to another point because it's very important. The other point is that what does it say in the Ketubah after that? It says in the Ketubah that if God forbid they get divorced, that he will give X amount of dollars. So the Gemara says, why? Why does the man promise the wife that if he dies or if they get divorced, that he will give her Matayim Zuz, and then they added more money as the time went on, the 200 Zuz plus today they do 18,000, 26,000, 52,000 dollars, whatever it is. Why? So the Gemara tells us because there were abusive men once upon a time that would get married, and then they would say, you know what, I'll dump my wife, I'll go marry somebody else. So the Gemara, the Gemara tells us that the Torah didn't want that it should be so easy for a man just to get married and then, then throw away his wife and leave her stranded like that. So the Torah gave him a penalty. If you get divorced, you have to pay her a lot of money. It's not a joke. You're going to get married and just abuse her and then move on with your life? We're not going to allow that. You're going to pay her a lot of money. 
And that will be an incentive that you don't get divorced and you take care of, of your wife and you'll be a good husband. But if you look in the Gemara, you go a little bit deeper. The Gemara gives us a little bit the history of how things evolved with the Ketubah. And the Gemara tells us that even with that Takana, the women were still afraid to get married because they said, if we get divorced, who's to guarantee he's going to give me the money? So they made a Takana that every man will give his wife the money up front and put the money in, the, in her father's house. But then as time went on, the rabbis realized it was a bad idea because every man and woman that got into a fight, it was so easy to get divorced because the money was waiting in the father's house, in her father's house. So the rabbi said, we can't make it too easy. On one hand, we want to take care of the woman. On the other hand, we don't want to make it too easy to get divorced. So they came up with a new idea. Don't put the money ahead of time, but have all the man's properties and all his metaltelin, his movable items, objects, all responsible for the money in the ketubah. What, what do you see from this Gemara? That the, the rabbis kept twe tweaking the idea of the ketubah. Let's take care of the woman this way. Let's take care of the woman that way. So... This really answers many questions. The rabbis understood we have to keep making changes, but within the framework of halakha, our Torah is nitzhi, is eternal. It comes from God. It's not man-made. So we must stay within God's framework of the Torah. We cannot, God forbid, deviate even one iota. But within the framework of halakha, we can come up with ideas to tweak things to, as the people take advantage of certain laws and abuse other people. So we need to make takanot and edicts how to not to allow them to abuse people. And that's what the rabbis did over the years. And this whole idea really answers another question. A lot of women are asking, why shouldn't it be that the second a woman wants a divorce, right away the get should be right there. With the ketubah should be a get ready to go. Forget about it if halakhically it works or if it makes sense in general. But that would be a bad idea as the Gemara is showing us. They didn't want the divorce should be ready to go because then how many people will call the rabbi and say, Rabbi, I want to get right now. How many times that actually does happen? Right now, I'm not waiting for tomorrow. Get me three rabbis. I want a bedin. I want a divorce right now. And then tomorrow they make peace to get back to normal. So we don't want divorce to be so easy. And that was something that the rabbis had to keep tweaking. On one hand, make sure that a man cannot abuse a woman and take advantage. On the other hand, you want to protect the woman, but you don't want to make it too easy for them to get there. So this is a balance back and forth. And this is the beauty of our religion of our Torah. As time goes on, you keep making sure that it fits with the spirit of the Torah of taking care of the woman, but within the framework of halakha, God forbid, we should deviate even iota of the Torah that we receive from Moshe Rabbeinu at Mount Sinai. So to summarize, to end this, this message, the message is our Torah is all about taking care of other people and living in other people's pain and God forbid never to hurt somebody else and never to cause other people pain. But at the same time, we must follow the halakha and we must make sure that we are proud of our religion and that we understand that there's nothing like our religion and our religion is the most caring, loving religion there is on, the, on planet Earth. Be proud of Am Israel, be proud of the Torah and be proud of our religion. Amen.